Welcome to an advanced clinical care tutorial. This series of tutorials will cover aspects of caring for patients with complicated HIV and TB disease in Department of Health facilities in South Africa, compiled by the NICD and the National Department of Health and facilitated by Dr. Madeleine Muller, Clinical Advisor for Beyond Zero. This is Module 8 of eight modules on the prevention, identification and management of cryptococcal meningitis. This module will cover key aspects of management of the patient who relapses or worsen on cryptococcal meningitis treatment, including iris. So Mr. Zizi is finally discharged from hospital. All his symptoms have resolved, and after five weeks of treatment, he was started on ARVs by his local community health center. But two weeks after the initiation of ARVs, Mr. Zizi is readmitted to hospital with severe headache. How should a subsequent episode of cryptococcal meningitis now be diagnosed and managed? Where do we start? First, examine your patient and go through your normal assessment of cryptococcal meningitis. Does this look like cryptococcal meningitis again, or are we dealing with a different opportunistic infection? For any patient to relapse, the first thing to check is adherence. Lack of adherence is still the number one reason for relapse, and a common challenge is with healthcare workers and clinics stopping treatment by mistake. Look for signs of raised intracranial pressure and check when the ART was commenced. Could this be an iris? Resistance to fluconazole is unlikely and uncommon. If you have a defaulter that's still within the consolidation phase, just restart the treatment if they're asymptomatic and continue with the normal course. As part of your assessment, do the LP again, and this time ask the lab to incubate the plates for at least 14 days. Remember, the patient is on treatment. Make clear on your request that it is a second episode, and the longer incubation period is recommended as there may only be a few fungi and it may take longer to get a positive result. Do not forget to do your opening pressure, especially if the patient has symptoms of raised intracranial pressure. But the question on our mind is, is this iris? Iris affects 20% of patients with cryptococcal meningitis who start on ARVs. It occurs about six weeks after ART initiation on average, but can be earlier or later. It's usually a recurrence of the meningitis with raised intracranial pressure. Typically, we would expect the CSF culture to be negative, but it may even still be positive at this point. Less commonly, there might be a lymphadenitis or a cryptococcoma as an iris phenomenon. This is an algorithm that summarizes the approach if you consider this to be a paradoxical iris. That is where the patient with an existing opportunistic infection on treatment gets worse on ARVs. Note that this is the only time that there might be a place for the use of steroids. Your management will depend on the severity of the clinical symptoms. If a patient only has mild symptoms, perform a therapeutic LP if indicated and increase the fluconazole whilst waiting for the culture results. There's no place here to do a crack or Indian ink as it may pick up dead yeasts and is not a confirmation of active infection. On the other hand, in severely ill patients, you may have to request a CT scan to exclude space-occupying lesions and cerebral edema and restart the patients on Ampho B and fluconazole 800 milligrams whilst waiting for the results. Discuss with a consultant whether steroids could be of use, but preferably wait until you have a confirmed negative culture, unless the patient's condition is life-threatening. The culture result will dictate further treatment options. If the culture is negative and the adherence is good, that confirms that it was most likely to be a paradoxical iris and fluconazole can go back to 400 or 200 milligrams depending on the phase of treatment the patient was in when the worsening of symptoms happened. As mentioned earlier, fluconazole resistance is relatively rare and only one of many causes of recurrence of symptoms in cryptococcal meningitis. When a patient relapses, be sure to consider non-adherence first, paradoxical iris, or you may even see a breakthrough of cryptococcal new formants even when there is no resistance present. 
There could also be a blockage of the drainage of the CSF, for example, with a cryptococcoma, causing ongoing symptoms, or just check if the clinic hasn't perhaps stopped the fluconazole maintenance. Also remember that patients with ARV failure is again at a high risk of reactivation. Resistance to fluconazole is not an easy diagnosis to make, even on culture, and ideally the laboratory would have needed a baseline isolate from which to draw a comparison, which they usually do not have. If you would like to request a culture for four cryptococcus, please check with your lab first to ensure that you are sending the correct samples and that it gets sent to the correct labs for evaluation. So let us see what happened with Mr. ZZ. On careful questioning, we discovered that Mr. ZZ stopped his fluconazole soon after discharge. He was readmitted re and retreated with induction phase treatment and had a therapeutic tap for his increased pressure. He was discharged after careful counseling on fluconazole 400 milligrams daily and this time completed the course successfully. In summary, when patients with cryptococcal meningitis relapse, be sure to check for adherence, 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 but always consider paradoxical iris as a possibility. If you suspect fluconazole resistance, it's best to discuss as this is much less likely a cause. This was the last module of our eight modules on the diagnosis, management and prevention of cryptococcal meningitis. Thank you for joining us.